By now, most kids are back to college and getting that diploma Man, it is not cheap these days. No, and there are three keys to financial success for college students, and we are chirping about them. And, and this, this is, is Chick to Chick. Chick. Right now, when a college student graduates, they have almost $40,000 of debt. That's just getting out into the world. Maybe they need to buy a new car. They need to get into an apartment. Maybe they also have to move to a different city. Either way, it is just such an overwhelming amount of debt that these college students have when they get out of four years of having a grand old time at college. And I think what we're not doing is I don't think we're setting them up for a success so they understand it. I, and I do think that's a hard way to start your life, that you come out and you get that first job and you're getting an apartment and you're trying to start your life with $40,000 in debt. That is so hard, and it's so hard to dig your way out of. Yeah. But as you said, we really need to take the time to educate our kids before they incur this debt. We really need to take the time to teach them the dollars and cents, the whole math mm -hmm. uh, behind the college expense, uh, financial aid, and all of those different components of getting that degree, which leads us to our guest today. Lisa Kennedy is with PSCCU. Lisa, it's uh, wonderful to have you here. $40,000 in debt. Cha-ching. How do kids even dig <laughs> yeah. their way out of that? And how long does it take for them to pay this off? Yeah, that's a, a really good point. It's not a small number. I mean, that's, you know, you think about buying a new vehicle, that's an entire car that they're purchasing. And they're starting out maybe in lower salary jobs. Uh, one of the things that you said, it's really important for parents to help their children understand what that debt actually means for them. You know, go online, pull up those student loan payment calculators. If you think about $40,000 in debt, on average, you have a 10-year repayment plan. It's going to be about $400 a month, $375 a month. What does that look like in their current budget and in their potential future salary as well? So have these conversations so they understand what that really means when they're borrowing that much money. And also, uh, you know, when you take that $40,000 in debt and take 10 years to pay it off, what does that really add up to now? What True. are they really paying off in 10 years when you add in interest over that time period? You got to look at it that way as well. You do. And I think that's a really great thing that parents can show children and their students is show those amortization tables in the same way that you look at it for your mortgage and how much interest you've paid over 15, 20, or 30 years. What are you truly paying um, in interest as opposed to just that $40,000 principal? And how much is going to the principal balance every month versus to interest? How can they maybe pay that off faster if they're in a position to do so? And how much money will that save them? There are a lot of really great calculators out there that you can use to teach this to your child before they start borrowing. Okay, so the key is parents. So I have one that already graduated. Actually, two stepdaughters that are well out of college paying their debt. I have a daughter who graduated a year and a half ago, and because of COVID, there have been some you know ways that she hasn't had to start pay that paying some of her debt back. Um, and another one that's a senior. And we do have these conversations. So talk to us about why it is so important to have a conversation with your child and what parents need to talk about. When do they need to start talking about it? Yeah, ideally, if you can have these conversations before they go off to college, you know, while they're still in high school, that would be great. Set them up with a bank account, whether it's checking and savings uh, or just savings and teach them how to manage their own money first. You know, sm work with smaller amounts and things that are meaningful to them, you know, paying for gas, paying for cell phone bills and kind of teach them the value of money. You know, where does the money that they earn, how far does that really go for them? And then Teach them the way that you manage your money. You don't have to give away all of your financial secrets uh, or tell them everything that you have in the bank, but you can teach them how you manage your budget and they can use that as an example. Yeah. If you're in a position where maybe your budget needs some improving as well, you can use our free resources on our website to get yourself in order as well. And kids' money does not grow on trees. No, I didn't find that tree anywhere. No, I didn't either. All right, so let's <laughs> let's tackle this. Uh, you say there are three keys to financial success for college students, and we're gonna we're gonna dissect this. And point number one, and I think this is crucial understanding financial aid, and these kids need to understand that this is not free money. 
Explain all of that and let's go into depth in, when you say understanding financial aid. Absolutely. As someone who worked in higher education in financial aid for 10 years, one of the biggest misconceptions is that financial aid is just that free money. And it's really everything. So grants and scholarships, which you're typically not paying back, which you should prioritize. You're looking at federal student loans, maybe even private loans, those that you would pay back once the student has stopped attending or graduating. And then make sure you're looking at other types of financial aid as well, whether that be work-study programs at colleges. These are programs that are based on financial need. So you'll need to talk to the financial aid office at your school. But these are positions where students work on campus and they're getting a paycheck. So they can use those funds for everyday living expenses, to put towards their tuition costs, you know, whatever that may be. Those are really great opportunities for students to earn an income while also gaining some work experience at school. And okay. if oh. your child is working off campus, see if their employer offers any type of tuition assistance. A lot of employers mm. are now offering this as a benefit to their employees and not just for folks in, you know, careers for 10 years, even at entry level positions, whether it be, you know, a Starbucks um, or Target, all of these places are offering tuition assistance for their employees because they want their employees to be well educated as well. So, you know, your child can get this, um, get these funds, they take the class, they submit their grades to their employer, and then their employer pays a portion of their tuition. That's going to reduce the amount that they're borrowing overall. So it's really important to understand all the different types of financial aid available to you. It's not just about that free money and it's not just about loans either. That is super smart information, mm -hmm. some of which I did not know. Okay, so how do parents support their students during this time? Which is number two. Number two. Yeah. Number two. It really is just making sure that they're set up for success. Make sure that they have access to the bank accounts that they need. They understand how their debit card works, how their credit card works, if they have one. Also inform them that they might start getting offers for credit cards on, on their own. So they need to understand what that means for them. You know, you don't want them to be in a position where they get all these enticing offers and all of a sudden they've racked up multiple lines of debt on different credit cards. So explain to them what those offers mean, look at them together and just create open lines of communication. Um, again, setting them up for success. One thing we hear a lot about is students don't actually know how to write checks. Uh -huh. so I do know that. They've had learning. to Google it. I'm in my yes. own house. <laughs> yes. Uh, I had to write a check the other day for something and I had to pause and think because it had been so long. So make sure that they have the tools they need. Explain that, you know, digital banking tools that you use to keep track of your money, have them set up account alerts if their balance goes too low. Just make sure that they're well informed and they know what resources are there for them so they can make the best financial choices. All right. And the third key to financial success for college students, you say there are ways to save money on campus. So how can students do that? Absolutely. There's a few ways that you can do this. I think one of the larger expenses that students have uh, are those textbooks. You know, you're buying them every semester. They're not cheap, <laughs> especially if you're buying them new. So if you're in a position where you can either rent textbooks, maybe for a class that you don't need to reference once it's done, you know, uh, a general education or an elective, um, not one of your core classes, or even consider used textbooks as well. A lot of upper class students are selling their textbooks to um, younger students, and you can usually find a good deal on, on those costs. Uh, make sure you're using your student ID. A lot of places will give you a discount just for being a student. Uh, streaming services, movie tickets, uh, shopping, all of those things, things that you're typically spending money on, you may be able to get a little bit of a break on those costs. So make sure that you're seeking out those opportunities. And then look at your campus. Your school is likely going to provide a lot of different entertainment opportunities, whether that be sporting events or comedy shows or plays. Use those to your advantage. You don't need to go on a night on a town. I'm sure your campus has plenty of things to do that are likely free for you as a student, and you may be able to bring other friends along at a discounted rate as well. Free is a good 
thing, Lisa. Yes, I like free. Like free. Kids, kids love free. <laughs> I love free. And I love everything that you said and everything that you touched on. And I really think that we need to do a better job of teaching our kids yeah. finances and making them understand that, you know what, college is not free. Mm -mm. And you don't want to come out with $40,000 in debt because that is an ugly financial hole to try to crawl, uh, to try to get out of. So Lisa, thank you so much for joining yeah. us and thank you for this great advice. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Great to see you both. Thank you. I think uh, the message that Lisa had was so important. So much of this starts at home. Um, and she said, you know, start talking to your kids when they're little. Well, I, it was like right after my child could say, mom, mom, I was teaching him one, two, three. <laughs> I opened a bank account for him and I tried to make him understand that, you know, if he wanted something, he had to work for it. He had to get a job and he had to contribute. And I think these are such important messages and laying that foundation at home at an early age and teach your kids how to write a check. <laughs> I can't believe how many kids don't know how to write a check. Oh, it's so true. But uh, it's really good advice she gave today. And I hope all of you got something from it. And we hope you'll come back for our next podcast when we trip about another topic. Thank you.